So, a lot of people always ask me about this track, which is Who's Afraid of Detroit? And once again, it's pretty simple. But the important part is getting all the elements before you start. And I, this is one. Of, this is also one of those tracks that kind of came out of something that I was working on that wasn't quite as good. <laughs> there was a track called "Dirty Bird for President" that I never actually put out, where these ideas started popping in for this track. You can hear the bass starting to pop in from this one. And uh huh, all those samples that I dropped. I abandoned it and then we ended up coming back to it and then I made this in like a, a day because I hadn't worked with that track in so long but I still had all the bits you can see that I worked on a lot of the EQs a lot better on the final and this is just a bunch of really the main bass line is a trick that I always do where I'm separating I'm copying the bass line and then I'm splitting it into two groups. It's the same bass line as when I all had all on one line. And I just copy it down to here. And then I, I erase the notes in the high register on the bottom and just keep the bottom. And I keep the notes in the high register on here. And then I EQ them so that all the notes resonate. Because if I just EQ the whole bass line, it's going through a whole octave. So you can't just use one EQ unless your EQ is like automating with, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So I just make two tracks and EQ them separately so the whole bass line will resonate. And you can even do that, you could even triple it. And you, there's a track that I did where I EQ'd every note. So in the bass line, which is like six notes, so I'd have six, six tracks, but it, it will help you. <laughs> it sounds a lot better that way. The main thing, the main line that everyone always recognizes is this. Very simple. Saw wave, little bit of distortion, little bit of reverb, a little bit of glide on the uh, portamento on the sound, and a little bit of slap back delay that I've actually typed in instead of using a like a sync to the BPM. So it's just a little bit like right after the sound, it's not actually rhythmic. Then, the other thing that's happening is that that is another thing, like I'm not just playing one line, there's two lines playing against each other, there's that line, and then I think it's this line. Let's just see, nope. It's not very well labeled. Like it should be it. Ah, so down here, so they play against each other. And this is very another just really simple mini popcorn standard sound, just with a delay and some reverb on it, playing against it. But this sound is also triggering through the vocoder. This is the part. This is the part that I could never figure out. This is also triggering through a vocoder, the voice. We'll get there, hold on. So whenever that voice sample pops on, it's almost like that thing, uh, like the side chaining thing. Whenever the voice is on, it ducks out all the synth sounds. And it, and, but it's kind of a little bit of a mix. It's not 
<laughs> but it's a really cool effect because the three of them going at the same time make it sound really li like alive. Like you'll hear, you'll hear right in here. So there's all three of them going, and it's all the same melody, but it makes it feel really like the instruments are alive instead of you're just like playing. Na -na 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 -na. Like my whole thing is just making it, trying to make it not sound like I'm going. Na -na 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 -na. That's like all I ever do. <laughs> it's make try not to make it sound like I'm just playing keyboard. And so all the tricks are usually just a way to get it to sound not like I'm on my 1985 Casio just hitting buttons. Then this uh, growing synth is just the, the old trick of I'm growing a synth. I put in a, just a, a nice pad and then I just put an envelope filter on it. And it opens and closes to give, like here's the sound earlier, that's earlier in the track. This is at the climax of the track. So it's way, all the way open. Then this is fading out towards the end of the track again. And then on top of that, it's probably the, is the orchestra sound that's just a generic lo-fi orchestra sound that gives it a little character. There you go. And they go together and they both open and close. Actually, the, the orchestra sound open and close is just, it doesn't even have automation, it's just on. So this is the one that makes it feel like it's alive on the bottom. And that just pulses throughout the track and gives it like the builds and sweeps. And that's basically it. Everything else is just drum beat. <laughs> and arrangement. <laughs> All the other stuff. One other thing I remember doing to get some impact when I come back out of the break, which you'd never really think to do, but it's to drop the snare on the downbeat instead of on the snare. And it gives you a really like punching. That snare is going through some distortion. That doesn't happen in the front, and it just gives it a little more grit when it comes back. And now we're back to the snare, it's not on it anymore. It's not on the downbeat anymore. And that's the old trick of where I've changed the bass line a little bit, and now we're back to the original bass line. Coming out of the breakdown, I like to change the bass line from four bars, and then go back. Gives you like a sense of relief when you get back to the baseline, kind of. That's that track. Who's Freddie Troy?